way into work. A little while back, we had just about had a little pile up. There was a car in front of the car that's in front of this van in front of me who suddenly decided at the last possible second that they wanted to make a left turn. Slammed on their brakes and had to wait for oncoming traffic because it's pretty busy right now. So stopped dead in the middle of the highway, just boom. So the car in front of this guy just about slammed into him. The van just about slammed into that car and I hit the shoulder because that's what I always do as soon as I see people slowing down. I don't want to wear out my brakes. So I don't want to slam on my brakes, lock up my tires, ru ruin my tires, ruin my whole vehicle. So whatever, I just slowed down slowly beside the traffic, right? And I had to hit the brakes pretty hard. But man, that could have been a big pileup. The guy behind me had lots of time to slow down at least because I got out of the way. <laughs> Oh, and there's whole families in these vehicles yet, you know? It's all because of one person who wanted to make a, a last minute turn. Not thinking about all the people behind them, all these families in these vans, you know? Could have been crushed in a pileup. Yeah, I know it's tough in the split second. You see your turn, oh, that's my turn. And you, you quickly, you don't want to miss your turn, right? But guys, it's not that hard just to go a little further down the road and do a U-turn and come back. I mean, you don't have to slam on your brakes to make the turn. But I understand it's tough right in the moment. Like, it's like a split-second decision. Oh, I better not miss my turn. I better stop not thinking. Oh, there might be people behind me not expecting me to stop dead. You know? I got the blood pumping a little bit. The, the van driver in front of me, uh, he, he was quite upset. I mean, he I could see he had probably like five kids in his van. I'd be pretty upset too. You put my whole family at risk because you didn't want to miss your turn. But then again, you know, we should all be following at a safe distance so that when people do do that, we're prepared for it, right? And everybody was. That's why there was no pileup. Everybody was following at a safe distance. Nothing happened. You're, you're just, even though you're following at a safe distance, you're not expecting people to come like to a dead stop very quickly in front of you, right? And you catch up to them very fast that way. So, it's a tough call to make, you know? You just, you just gotta watch out for people on the road because most of the people, it seems, it seems that way, a lot of the people out here have no idea what they're doing. No idea, they're just, they're just holding the steering wheel, hoping to dear, go, hoping for dear life that they're gonna get to where they're going safely. It is kind of scary. Because, you know, a lot of people, they don't take driving as seriously as we do. To me, driving is an art form. There are rules of the road and there are ways to safely maneuver and, you know, handle your vehicle. Maybe because it's what I do for a living. They call me a professional driver. But a lot of people, they don't care much about it. All they do is they get their driver's license just so that they can get from point A to point B. They don't understand, you know, stay in the right lane, people pass on the left lane. They don't understand why people get mad when they drive slow in the left lane or, or you know, when they cut into traffic or when they slam on their brakes in front of a semi. They don't understand why people get mad at them when they do stuff like that. Because to them, it's just, they're just getting from point A to point B. That's the, the, that's the extent of their driving, I don't want to say ca capabilities, but that's their extent of their skills because that's all that they've developed them to be. Because they don't care much. Not everybody can be interested in driving. It's not everybody's thing. I don't blame them. I don't like knitting that much. So I'm not very good at knitting. I don't spend a lot of time practicing knitting and I don't really care much for it. So when people, some people driving is just not their thing. And that's cool, whatever. You just gotta watch out for them on the road. <laughs> just heads up, keep your head up. That's what your hockey coach always told you growing up, right? When you're on the ice, you keep your head up or you're gonna get nailed. All right, let's get ourselves onto the road. Here we go, back at work. Feels good, the window's all fixed up. For 24 kilometers. Window's all fixed up, truck is smelling nice. They put some of that, uh, some kind of uh, product into the air system here, the interior air system so that it takes the smoke smell out. Seems to have worked good. Now it smells like something else, but it's not as bad as smoke smelled a little bit but that that smoke smells so hard to get out of everything it's just it sticks to everything forever uh, we're officially underway on our on our next trip
trip. Home time is officially over. That was a nice long break at home. A little too long, but I can't complain. I loved it. This is the interlake of Manitoba, sort of in the central part of Manitoba, right between Lake Manitoba and Lake Winnipeg. We're closer to Lake Manitoba right now. We're about to, uh, a few minutes here, so we're about an hour or so, we're about to go through the Narrows, which is uh, the narrow part of Lake Manitoba. The Narrows, that's what they called it. Makes sense, I think, right? So we're gonna go through over the little bridge over the narrowest part of the lake and we'll be on the west side and headed towards Swan River then. I haven't been up in the inner lake in a long while since I delivered locally. It's very wild and empty up here. By wild I mean very untouched, uh, wild nature. Small towns are uh, spread apart quite far. Not a lot of people up here. Most of the population of Manitoba lives in the south where I live. So I live in the most populated part aside from Winnipeg. And Winnipeg is in southern Manitoba. So you come up here just a little bit north of the city and you suddenly find vast open spaces and big huge forests. Pretty much it's trees all the way up to the tree line where the trees stop growing uh, near Churchill, Manitoba. And then you uh, run out of road. But even though you run out of road, there's still a territory of Canada up north of that yet called Nunavut. And they have no roads leading there. It's all fly-in. Or you can get up there in wintertime on the ice roads. But there's a uh, few thousand people living up there. I mean, what, 30,000 people in Nunavut? Am I right? Something like that? It's a big territory. It's a big territory. It goes all the way up to uh, the northernmost part of Canada in the North Pole there. Looks like we got some construction going on here. We got some action. Whoa, what's this? You're not putting rocks on the highway again, are you? You're not gonna wreck my window again. I just left. Better not be wrecking it. What is this? This is no signs. Have you guys seen any signs? Did I pass them? No sign saying, hey, construction ahead, watch out, flag person or something. What are they doing here? And there's oncoming traffic, so do I go around? Nobody here. Oh, now someone's getting out of their vehicle. I'm not going past there with a car coming. No, there's a car coming, man. He's trying to get me to go into oncoming traffic. What is this? Oh, they got an outhouse here. That's weird. Now I'll go. Got a barricade. barricade at all. They're not doing construction or anything. I think we just got onto a, a reserve. Are they blocking the road to like certain traffic or something? This is a provincial highway. And here is the Narrows. Where the lake is the narrowest. I know, Manitoba's very clever with their naming. Very clever. This is, down there is a big lake. And up there is a big lake. What a great place to build a bridge. At the narrowest part. Okay, I'm done. You get it. <laughs> Look, fishers. I wish I was fishing. That looks fun. On the pontoon. Da -da 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 My wife hates that song. I have to sing it every time I see a pontoon. Look, there's another one. On the pontoon. Da -da I don't know the words, actually. That's all I know. <laughs> 
Well, now we are on the other side of the lake. That was nice. That was very nice. Nice bridge. Like it's been abandoned. It says commercial space for sale or lease. Anyone want to buy a, a vintage building? I mean, it looks like it's in good shape structurally. Needs the a little bit of work. Meters, but... Turn right on. Parks RTE <laughs> Highway 10. Oh, Karen. First, we're going to stop and let Diesel take a little weasel break. How's that sound? This is a scale, but it's not open. And I don't like to pull in here when it's not open. I don't like to pull in here ever. But Weasel needs his weasel break. Got about 10% left on my camera here. I have to charge it. Oh, it's a beautiful day up here. It's like 9.30 in the evening. The sun is still up behind the clouds over there. I like pointing that out, it's my favorite part. My favorite part of living in Canada is the summers. Summers are awesome. Let's not talk about winters, that's the forbidden topic. Oh yeah, oh, I gotta get the keys. Uh, Diesel's stairs fit perfectly in my cubby hole on my passenger side now, so it's super easy to store them and I don't have to keep them in my cab. Well, we made it to Swan River, parked up the co-op here. I'm gonna venture off all the way into this deep sleeper in the back here and organize a little bit and call it a night. Tomorrow we deliver here in town and then I head off to uh, Carlisle. Uh, Carlisle, Saskatchewan, and then Regina, Saskatchewan. We have 10 drops on this load. 10. So uh, it'll be a lot of running around in the next couple of days, and then I don't know what my reload is yet. I'm kind of hoping it'll take me far south. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out.